everyone, it's Kamal Fernandez here with my very, very good friend from the other side of the pond, Kathy Santo, and we're here to talk about um, online um, presence, how to create an online presence, and online training specifically. Um, these are conversations that I've had with numerous people over the, um, the last couple of months. You may have seen um, some of those conversations lifting all ships on Facebook, and this one's slightly along the same line, but a little bit more practical things that you can do as an individual to start your own online entity and have an online presence. Obviously with COVID-19 um, in full um, uh, run across the globe, people have been restricted about being able to physically create classes or to physically deliver classes um, and to physically meet people in halls and venues and, and buildings etc and they've had to think a little bit more creatively about reaching their um, clients and their audience and the natural inclination is to move towards technology and to utilize the internet for a lot of people that can be daunting um, and quite frightening initially and myself and Kathy have both been through that um, that mill and hopefully come out through the other side. So we thought we'd share some of our lessons learned. So first and foremost, how are you doing, Kathy? How are you keeping? We are doing well. Good. Um, things are staying the same, which means that our openings are still opening. And, yep. um, you know, with the elections over, yep. we're going to hope to see things, you know, level out, whatever yep. that means. So. Yep. Because, you know, that was a lot of noise, whether, no matter what side you were on, that was a lot of noise and people were a little stressed about it. Yep, but absolutely. just the fact that it's over and sort of called, mm -hmm. um, I feel like people are all, whew, we yeah. can just relax and not get in the fray about it. So yeah, yeah we're doing, yeah, how about you guys? It was a huge thing in your, uh, obviously in your country, in your culture that it was taking a lot of, and I think that the um, the emphasis on COVID and how it's been dealt with was definitely politicized. So that's definitely taken a, a, an, Im an impact on people's mental health. And that's something to consider. Definitely what's happened, I think globally is that people have had to learn to, there's been a new normal. So you can't meet your clients necessarily in the same way that you do. We are currently on lockdown in the UK and we are restricted to what we can do and that we can do one-to-ones and we can attend people's homes, but there is still restrictions in place. Um, so uh, Kathy and I have been through on this joint journey of embarking on online training. And we wanted to just, I wanted to share with you some of the things that we did to first and foremost, build up our social media platform or to create a social media platform and just really simple things that you can do today to start to reach out to your client base and to provide a, um, a platform and a medium for which that others can tap into. So, um, so Kathy, just talk a little bit about um, like your, what you do online and, and, and um, the various entities you have online for yourself. All right. So you, I think really important is deciding what your brand is going to be, what your message is going to be. And I live in the pet owner family dog world. So obviously that's how I'm going to drive all my content. Mm -hmm. um, I also get help because I am AKC's master dog trainer. So a lot of the content I do there, I can use for me, but I'm primarily on Facebook mm -hmm. and I'm on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that people get a social media platform or two. I, there's people who are, do other ones, but those are the two we sort of live with. I think it's manageable to have two. Yep. I do content on a Facebook page for my students only. Yep. And I have a blog. And we have YouTube videos as well as an online course. Yeah. So I think if you're starting out and you're like, oh my God, I don't have any of that stuff. Just like break it down and say, okay, I'm going to pick a platform, probably Facebook. And I'm going to sit with myself and decide what my brand message is going to mm -hmm. be. You can't be all over the place. You can't get everything. You can't do service dogs and working dogs. You just yeah. can't. Like decide what's most important to you and more importantly, what your current clients or future clients will want mm -hmm. and stick with that message. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. I think that is probably the absolute, um, the basis of which you should build any business and, and certainly venture and things like is first, you have to be true to yourself and what do you feel most passionate about? So obviously online training is really, really spread in terms of um, certainly in dog training, both from the pet training market and dog sports. And there's so many options out there for people. So the first thing that you have to do is identify where do you fit um, in that spectrum? Where is it that you want to focus your attention? 
And also, what is it that you want people to, uh, what is it that the energy that you want to put out and therefore attract? So, you know, I'm a trainer that uses reinforcement to train my dogs. And I focus primarily on um, dog sports as opposed to domestic dog training. I do do certain entities of my, um, what I deliver and what I offer, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is about um, more domestic behavioral issues. But primarily my main lane is dog sports and that's my chosen path and Kathy as she said is pet training when you try and do everything you end up doing a lot of things really really badly as opposed to doing a few things really 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 well and tend to keep try and keep the, your focus on the things that you are most passionate about and that you really really enjoy and that you are going to be active about because creating a social media presence can take a daily input would you agree Kathy? Oh, absolutely. You have to have, and I do a content calendar. Mm -hmm. So with my team, because I can't run the school and do content all by myself. So, but if you're doing it by yourself, yeah, put out a 30 day content calendar and just write down, project for the month ahead. What are some topics you want to speak to? Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention that when you do this, it feels like you should be by yourself and protect it from other dog trainers, but really the opposite. Yeah, is absolutely. True. I think that you should have meet up with other dog trainers, you know, online, maybe they're in their, your area, maybe they're not and have like this hive mind because they can lift you up and help you see things differently. We're not in competition with each other. There are certainly enough dogs out there mm -hmm. and maybe somebody gravitates to your personality over somebody else, which mm -hmm. Kamal, you did touch on a bit. I think you have to use whoever you are should shine through in your videos and your content. If you are not like, hey, like I, I tend to be that, mm -hmm. and that's who I am, and you know, Kamal, if I'm on camera or not, I'm hanging out in my living room, you've been here, yep. this is who I am. Yeah, absolutely. But if, but if you're like, oh, I'm a little more laid back and shy, like don't make that yep. take you away from doing this, like be yourself because the client should know who they're gonna get when you eventually can see them in person. Absolutely, and I think the thing that to say is people will see through um, if you are de disingenuous and if you're talking about longevity um, in a, a very competitive industry, you want to be true to yourself and therefore attract the energy. So the, the, again, like Kathy, I have a, a Facebook media, um, a Facebook profile and a Facebook presence. And I also utilize Instagram. Those are the main ones that I, and Twitter, I do have a Twitter account, which I, uh, which my, all my accounts are interlinked. Um, I tend to populate things like about my my dogs and my a little bit about my um, my daughter uh, and a little bit of some like just stuff to make myself more um, so personable so people get to see little bits of who I am and a little bit of dog training obviously that's my primary thing um, and and I tend to focus on those on my social media so that I can um, you know that's the people that I want to attract. I, I tend my thing is not to be controversial in terms of, you know, I don't want to whilst, you know, some of the things that I, I stand by might be controversial to others. I don't, that's not the lane that I want to uh, um, attract and, and I want to go to for myself. And that might work for each individual in the same that I don't want to um, try and be, um, you know, I don't do say, for example, offer um, agility training or because that's not what my specialist area is. I tend to stay to the thing that I, feel most comfortable with and that I really feel most passionate about and I really like to teach so adolescent dogs is a real you know pet topic of mine reactivity in dogs is a real those are the core things that I focus on for my pet domestic side and then primarily dog sports in terms of social media um, it does take a little bit of work to get your head around social media and one of the biggest things I think that I hear people that are new to social media or certainly thinking about getting into online training is the um the they've got to get over the self-awareness and being um you know comfortable in front of the camera and kathy will tell you like when we first started filming and i went to hers I, it was I, you know you get very self-conscious and you feel like inept and you, really the more you do it the more you'll get comfortable with it and the big thing that i do now is i just imagine that i'm talking to a person or I'm delivering a seminar to a group full of people, or I'm just training the dog. My favorite thing to do is to get a dog in front of me and just train it because that's when I just lose my inhibitions. And like everybody, we all get self-conscious to a degree. Um, find the thing that you're most comfortable with. A lot of people find the whole social media thing. They can be quite self-conscious about you know, their appearance and how they look. Honestly, 
get over it. People, are, that isn't what people are going to gravitate to you. They're going to gravitate to you because you have something to offer, that you are genuine in how, what you come across and that you are passionate about. And I think that's really, really key and really important. I agree. I agree. And I've never been self-conscious talking, I think probably because early on in my career, I was doing a lot of TV with it, yep. but I won't watch playback. I've never, yep. I've never yep. watched anything I've done. Um, I don't even listen to my podcast because I know I'll be hypercritical of it. So I'm fortunate enough that I can do the content and send it to somebody and have them just post it for me yep. uh, because I, I just don't like it. But there's a few key things I think people need to keep in mind. Number one, if they don't want to speak on the video, right? They're not comfortable with it. They can do something that I saw you do early on, which is they can play a video on their laptop and speak over it. Yep. I think for a lot of people, that's a sweet spot because yep. it's them working with a dog and they're just filming it. Yep. And then they can come back and do a play by play over it. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily on camera like you and I are doing now. Mm -hmm. They're, it's almost a little bit of a wall of a protection. And that could be a first really good toe in the water for them. Mm -hmm. The other way is a podcast, which sounds scary and it's really not. And I mean, you can get expensive microphones and things like that, but the reality is you could just do your own little podcast and don't have to put it on Apple or Stitcher or anything like that. You could just send it out onto your Facebook page. Just do a recording. Yeah. Have some notes if that helps you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think those are two really easy ways to get into it. Or you could even do a Facebook Live like this. I mean, my biggest note would be I think everybody should invest in some sort of really good lighting mm -hmm. <laughs> because it does matter. Yep. You don't want to see somebody sitting in the dark mm -hmm. and, you know, just just go on and do something like that. Make it, you can even populate it with somebody you say, hey, I'm going to do a Facebook Live. Could you be on so you can ask me questions and yep. I can feel like I'm talking to somebody? Yep. I mean, those are really easy ways to start. Yeah, Facebook Lives are great. They always get a really great response from people. People love the interaction. Um, on my to-do list, I am absolutely going to do a podcast. I keep on trying, meaning to get around to it. I must get my backside again. I must do podcast on my list of to-dos. So um, if, you're, if you're just thinking about, say, for example, you already have an established dog training business, definitely think about your Facebook profile and, and put content on there. Put, um, you know, what you're doing with your dogs. People like to know what you're, what's going on in your life. Like if you're walking the dogs, like I love to walk my dogs. So I put stuff about me walking my dogs. I might put my puppies and little bits of training. And I put little, you know, you just put stuff on there that, that resonates with you that you want to share with people in terms of creating. Um, and, and the thing to consider is create a community rather than trying to attract, attract, business don't forget the monetary gains because in truth you've got to accept that to a certain degree social media um it is a it's the foot in the door you still have to have something people are going to really commit and go yes i'm willing to part with my you know certain these times hard-earned cash to um you know to, to buy a service of you so first just think about creating a community of like-minded people that like what you have to say and want to hear your voice obviously i write a blog um regularly where I just literally, when things come to me, I write a, a, a blog on my phone and then I post it on WordPress and I share it with um, my respective Facebook pages uh, and uh, online, etc. with my various groups. So that again, that's just, it's just my little opinion about things. It doesn't mean that I'm right or wrong. It's just my opinion, but it's hopefully what I, my agenda is. Hopefully it will resonate with somebody in a, and, and that's my, my, my thing is I want to connect with people. And therefore, if I can connect with people, I can connect with their dogs and help them have better lives for their dogs. So um, in terms of your, your approach, think about who you are and where you want, what direction you want to take your social media and therefore your business. Think about creating a community rather than trying to chase people's money, because that is, you know, if you're going in with that intent, um, you could be, you know, you're going with the wrong intention. And in my opinion, you're going to, um, end up falling flat in your face because people will see through that. Yeah. And again, if you're thinking of doing it solely for the monetary gains, you're going to find that it's a, you need to be thinking long-term. Yeah. It's not a quick um, overnight. Let's make loads of money. I mean, like Kathy and I were talking about it. It takes years to get your head around the idiosyncrasies of online training specifically, which again, that's a conversation for another day. But if we're talking about what you can do now, get a social media platform, start building that up. Think about creating a community and also utilizing what's available. So Facebook has, the you can create Facebook groups, you can make them private for your clients and you can offer them content and you can ask, you know, for you can do that on a subscription basis. They can subscribe and pay a, a monthly fee or they can pay a, fa a flat out fee and you can put content on there. I have several groups um, that operate in that manner. 
people subscribe to, for example, The Jungle Book, which is a year in the life of my puppies. Um, and I put content on there every week showing what I'm doing with my dogs, the, the trials, the pits and pull, uh, you know, the pits and falls or the ups and downs, I should say, of um, working with three very, very different dogs and also sharing, um, you know, just normal stuff that I do with my dogs and what I'm training them. But also I do lives on those groups, um, specifically talking about, you know, what's going on with them and how I overcome it. And also if somebody has um, a question, I can have that interaction with them. I can do a live and communicate with them. So find your own little way of operating within your um, own Facebook groups. How about you, Kathy? Anything you can think of? Yeah. You know, I think that not to be Pollyanna about it, but the reason that we all got into dog sports beyond we wanted to compete and that we started extending ourselves to other people was because we wanted to make changes. We wanted people to have better lives with their dogs and dogs have better lives with their people. So when you think of it that way, you can make more peace with the idea that not everything that you do is going to be monetized in the moment. Yeah. Because when you think about it, maybe the people watching your stuff aren't going to buy but they're going to refer you or talk about you. So I like to call them the invisible referrals. And these are the ones that happen that you don't even know actually happen. And they come back to you in some form yep. at some point. So, you know, just, just make peace with that. And also you were talking about your groups. I think that if you really want to do something, you should look at someone else who's done it really well. And so if they become a member of any of your groups, yep. they can get the pace of it and how you post to it. Yep. Um, and then they can sort of design their thing after that, you yep. know, in their lane that they've chosen. But yep. I also think you have to have your direction. Like you could, you could be like, oh, I want to talk about this and this and this, but just like bring it in. So think about the month, all right? So now the holidays are rolling around. So for me, my drive for November and December with my students is going to be, better management, yep. um, how to structure some quick wins for your training. So when people come over or you have to leave, I did a whole pandemic puppy series mm -hmm. that, you know, the series that nobody wants to do, but here we are. Mm -hmm. um, and it was free content and I've got four of them. I'm doing a fifth one and they were each an hour or more. One was on creating, one was on managing. And you just give that out to the world. It's your gift, but also what we've seen is it's been passed around yep. and people have come to be students that way. Yeah. It's just, you know, you've got to have an idea. Don't, it's just too big of a endeavor yeah. to think about it big. Yeah. You have to drill it down yeah. and think about this week, this day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And have a plan. And I like planning my content ahead of time because it just makes me sane. Yeah, it definitely. I think, you know, when you, you start to look into certainly marketing online trade, it can be very, very un overwhelming. And I will openly say when I first, you know, started doing online training and thinking about marketing it was really really overwhelming to think of all the different things and creating a mailing list and then getting on board with that and how to populate content and what should i share and what shouldn't i share etc cetera, etc cetera. but like kathy said just break it down into steps first and foremost look at the clients that you've got reach out to them create, get their all their emails send them an email connect with them and saying this is what you're thinking about doing and the other really really great message that a lesson i learned was ask people what they want from you what is it that you would like to hear me teach what is it that you would like to see me teach or what you would you like to what do you think that you i do really well that you want to find out more about because you can go with an idea of i'm going to teach for example loosely walking and people go oh no what i really would like you to teach me is um you know um hand touches or something else you know it doesn't really matter or you know a recall you know they might think that's the thing that you really really do well and they've picked up on so allow your um your community to dictate what they want from you that's where social media is great you can put that on social media and get re recipients and get responses back so it gets an uh, uh, indicator of where to take your your courses and your content instagram does questions you can put a question out on instagram and do that in your stories and get people responding what is it that you want to know from me what is it that you think that i'd be great at teaching and so forth and so forth Puppies are great ways. If you've got a puppy, share information about them, you know, like share stuff that you're doing with them. And that's the biggest misconception. People get all protective about their content. And then really it's so ironic. The more you give, the more that you will receive. I know that, the, you know, I give endless content and I, I'm overwhelmed with how much that comes back to me tenfold. So don't be um, uh, guarded about your, your content. And so be sensible. Obviously, you, I mean, I have, um, I, I'm very mindful of you know keeping um you know certain I, i'm not one to 
um, share things, for example, personal things about myself. That's my choice. I, I, I keep, whilst I share things about my daughter, um, you know, whether at what time of day I've gone to the toilet and, you know, blah, blah, is not really for social media. That's my own personal take on it. All power to those that do, but that's just my thing. However, um, but you need to be responsible for that. You need to take account of that from a business point of view and also, for, again, the branding that you want to um, share. Any thoughts on that, Kathy? Yeah, I think we decided, and you and I are very much alike yep. on this point. We decided yep. from the beginning how it was going to look. We didn't just jump into it one way and change midstream. And there's really core values that you have that you need to decide on before you move forward. I'm like you. Like, you'll never know when I'm feeling sick or my car had a flat tire because I'm just, that's not, it's just not it for how me. Operate, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. want everybody going, oh, I'm sorry, I feel better. Like, I, I just signed into that. Um, yeah. But some people are. Yeah. And that can create a community too. And you attract yeah. those people who are attracted Absolutely. to that type of person. Yeah. Um, I also want to be say clear. That, with, you have to be clear with that intention from the get go. So yeah, because if that, you do it wrong, it's really hard to change. Yeah. Because then they're like, well, why didn't you tell me? Like, I didn't know. Like, how are you feeling? Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. But yeah. I would also say that your page that you have for business and this group that you're going to make, you should in your personal page, number one, if you're going to have people in your personal page that are your students, you know, you've got to make it so that you're not, do, you're not one way there and then yeah. another way on your business page, right? So yeah. I make a decision to allow some students who are like family to me to my personal page, but my personal page is pretty much a reflection of what I just said. You're yeah. still not going to see me talking about my flat tire. Yeah. Yeah. However, on my personal page, because I do have so many people from diverse, I, I have thousands of people who are my friends page, uh, my Facebook page is friends, but I do, my banner does reflect what I do and yeah. my website. Yeah. And so if you went to my personal page and you were like, oh my God, I didn't know she was a dog trainer. My friend needs that. You would see that and it would get you to that other page where the content is really going to live. So that's important. Your personal page has to drive people to the business page. Yeah, and well. again, I think it comes back to, you know, again, for me, it's about being genuine. And, and you know, I, I, they, like Kathy said, Kathy's the same as what she is. I don't, you know, I'm the same of where I am, whether you met me in person or whether you saw me on social media. I don't have two heads, as it were. I have my... I don't have my social media head and my, I, you know, what I share is the stuff that I, you know, I am what I am as it were. So it's that consistency because I genuinely believe people will see through that. So um, I don't want to do the OTT hard sale. That's just not my personality. So I don't push myself in that sense, but it's knowing, and, and that it's not, you've got to find what you're comfortable with and, and, and do the, do um, what you feel is you're happy with and then find your own lane. So in terms of, you know, the variation, so you can obviously create a Facebook group where people can participate and they can then, you can then um, find out, create again, the community, you can provide various variations in how you connect with your clients. So it could be by a zoom class. So at the moment, my classes are being delivered on zoom which is a great medium we're having a conversation on Zoom. Um, it's a great medium um, to uh, re to deliver a class on clients, uh, to your clients. So I would, again, I do webinars on Zoom as well. I can have up to uh, 100 people. Um, so a really, really great medium to reach out to people. Um, that's one option. Another option is Facebook. Do Facebook groups and Facebook, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the um, name. Um, oh, it's gone out of my brain. Story? Stories? not stories, you know, when, um, you can, oh, it's a new thing, Facebook of relief, which is similar to where you can have, um, units. Hang on. I'm going to have to look it up now. It's going to bug me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you can do Facebook rooms. That's it. Facebook. You can create a Facebook room where, where you again can have add people to that room and people can participate and have a conversation, et cetera, et cetera. I haven't used Facebook rooms because my preference is to use zoom. It's just what you're comfortable with. There is no right and wrong. Um, but again, do what you feel comfortable with. Um, I have obviously several Facebook groups where I can deliver lives and, and people, I can post content. They're, they're all private, depending on what group people are in. Um, the other option is simply on WhatsApp. If you are, you, you can create a, um, a WhatsApp group or have an individual interaction with a client where you can reach out to them WhatsApp. You can get video con uh, videos from them. You can feedback using my, my one of my favorite apps is Coach's Eye really simple app to use. You can download the video, you can slow it down, you can do a voiceover. Great way to give feedback to clients, etc. 
Um, so several ways you can do a FaceTime call, a WhatsApp call to connect with your clients. So loads of options of how to connect with your clients in ways that are uh, as near to doing a one-to-one -one as possible. I've been using them, you know, um, over COVID a lot and they've been super effective. I've trained people from, you know, New Zealand, Australia, America, you know, um, Europe. And um, so, you know, again, all via the medium of Facebook, Zoom, WhatsApp, et cetera. And it's been really, really, really effective. And a lot of times I'll ask them to take a video of the problem they're having yep. and send it ahead. Yep. So that I can sort of get my head around what they're actually doing. And, you yep. know, pretty much right away, you're like, oh, it's this and that. But yep. I like them to have that idea. I also ask people um, to just set up a camera and film their whole session. Yep. And that's really enlightening to them for themselves to see what yep. they're doing. But yeah, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Don't discount pictures yep. and like sayings, you know, um, uh, the one, what is it? Uh, people expect so much of their dog yet so little of themselves. Yep. Right? So things like that, you don't always have to have a video or a stunning picture, but I will say before you put a picture up, do sort of see it from a client perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking a picture, it's a beautiful picture of your dog on a sit stay, but in the background there's a dog like pooping. Like, yep. you know, yep. make sure that what you are presenting or what is what you want people to see. Yeah, definitely when you're popular. And also content can come in the form of written. As you said, like you could do a lesson sheet. I have lesson sheets, tons of them. Yep. Um, and you put a logo brand at the top mm -hmm. and you load it into Facebook. There's a PDF, you know, people love numbers. So the five top things to know before you get your new puppy. Absolutely. You know, yep. the five biggest mistakes people make with training the recall or housebreaking. Like, and again, whatever your lane is. But again, I'm going to stress that they need to think about the time of year we're in. This yep. is holidays. And so... You know, if you did a live on your best holiday trick for getting a dog to sit straight on halts, you know, because yeah. you're home with your family, yeah. you know, maybe they can help you with distractions. It's just being creative and thinking outside the box, protecting the brand and making sure that you deliver regularly because sometimes that happens, not with us because we're prolific content people. Yeah. Sometimes people get into this and they're going to do it, they're going to do it, and then they fall off the edge of the earth and there's nothing for two months it's really hard to resurrect a yeah. dead group because then they don't trust you yeah. so you've got to commit to this long term yeah. and not just have a whim after you listen to our call today to do it and then the holidays get the better of you because really you need to make this a big part of your life in yeah. order for it to succeed yeah and my, a friend of mine talks about um feeding your facebook or feeding your social media you absolutely have to so i post regularly on social media i post regularly to all my groups to give them content. So um, some one group, uh, my jungle book group, I post content every single week. The other groups I tend to post intermittently on those. So I either do a live or I'll post content of my dogs, training, etc. So they get additional content that's not available anywhere else. So they get something that's a bit more exclusive. So again, another perk of being in that type of group. So um, just some simple ways there to, to utilize social media and to start building up um, your platform. So think about, you know, what people, what brand, what angle you want to approach from when you're, you're training and how you want to be and how you want to project yourself. Start, set up an Instagram account, set up a Twitter account or set up a Facebook account and start to populate that and start to grow it. So uh, obviously because my social media is interlinked, it's very easy to post on one and it transfers automatically on the other. Sometimes it can have a glitch and you have to go around and do it, but it does take a little bit of daily input to manage. But like everything else, it's that little bit of commitment that you need to make to get um, people interested and to show your willingness to partake in the process, which is what people will be attracted to. Um, you know, I have to mention content yeah. schedulers. Yes. Sanity savers. Yeah. So if you know that your week is going to blow up or just because it's easier for you, go ahead and get a content scheduler, plug in what you want posted, mm -hmm. you know, during the week. And that way, if you can jump in and do some extra in real time, awesome. But if you can't, you just know that it's going to populate into your social media once you set it up. And that is such a time saver for people. Another common thing that people um, say about getting into online training also is well, what is it that I have to bring to the table? You know, what everybody, there's so much out there. You know, there's Kathy Santo and Kamal Fernandez and Bob Smith and John Doe, et cetera. And, and they're a bit overwhelmed by, um, well, what is it that I can do? Don't try and compare yourself to doing what others do. Your strength is doing, being yourself and being an individual. And 
look at things creatively. If all, everybody else is teaching a sit stay, you teach a down stay. If everybody else is doing a sit and a down stay, you teach a stand stay. There's always ways in which you can come up with something that's more creative and unique and interesting. And that's the key thing, being unique and interesting. You know, um, certainly say for a sport like um, agility, there's so much training out there, amazing training on agility. It's come, it's then what are you gonna possibly bring to the table? Is it, there's probably somebody does a weave course and a contacts course. Think of something differently, like think about how to create focus exercises or, you know, doing an informal play retrieve or, you know, body awareness. I mean, I'm sure again, those content, those courses, but something that you really, really are comfortable with and that you feel that you do really, really well. And most importantly, you enjoy delivering that, that um, aspect. It might be puppy training. I mean, I personally love puppy training. So it's something that I like to do and deliver content on. So I would be absolutely comfortable doing something specifically aimed at puppies. So find something that you're really, really passionate about and you're really interested in because that will feed you as well from a content point of view. If you're putting stuff out there that you're really passionate about, people will gravitate to you. That will feed, reinforce your behavior and so forth and so forth. And I totally agree with that. And you've got to just do it. Yeah, like do don't it. over plan too, because yeah. we're talking about planning and, and you know, setting it up and yeah. And that should take a wee bit of time, but then just do it. Just yeah, have a go. Do it. Yeah. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get feedback. Some yeah. of it's going to be like, here's what I'd like you to talk about. Some of it's going to be, you're amazing. Yeah. But even if it's critical, all of that moves you forward. Yeah. And through the one little idea you get, mm -hmm. it's going to germinate into lots more ideas. Yeah. I mean, and listen, if anybody is listening to this and is a pet dog market and they want ideas, I'm, they can PM me. I'm happy okay. to give them ideas. Okay. Like this time of the year when people are going to be home <laughs> because they yeah. have to be, or yeah. it's holidays. Like I would focus a lot on canine fitness. Mm -hmm. So teaching a dog paws up on the bottom step of your stairs, you know, just like little things like that. Yeah. It's achievable for them. They get a quick win. They feel happy. They can put, oh, that's it. Make yeah. sure they post their wins on your page. Yeah. So send us a picture of your dog achieving this challenge. Yeah. Do challenges. People want to talk about their dogs. Yeah. So the common questions, oh, you've seen this. Um, post the last picture you, taught, you took of your dog mm -hmm. and then everybody gets on. So then they share those pictures and then more people come to your page and just, just be easy with it and be excited about it. I think that's why every morning I'm like, I can't wait to see what we're going to do today because it's just, it's fun to get Yeah, I, I mean, I have to say like lives and that is it. Once you get into it, it's actually really fun. Yeah, it's really, it is fun to do. And it's nice to get the interaction of people, have a banter with people and, you know, getting the conversation going. And also for, certainly for my blog, it gives me an opportunity to say things that I feel really passionate about, you know, like to uh, my take on dog training. I did one recently about, you know, the relationship or the emotional um, re response your dog has to reinforcement. How does your dog actually feel about reinforcement? For me, that was something that, that I felt was a valid conversation to have. And I just shared it. And if people like it, great. And if they don't, that's great too. I, it's just my voice. And that's the thing to don't take the criticism or the feedback to you personally. And again, if people say it's great, take it with a pinch of salt. If people say it's awful, take it with a pinch of salt. It's again, you're entitled to your opinion. That is the, the wonderful thing in the world that we live in. You're entitled to your opinion. Um, and hopefully you adding something that's going to be of merit and people are going to enjoy it and attract an audience and therefore build a, a community, which is what's going to help you in these times. And if you're super sensitive, have a student read the comments. I have a keychain. It says never read the comments because actually I never read the comments. <laughs> if somebody else do it because I just... I don't want it to put, if there's somebody says something negative, I don't want to know. So my team knows, and again, it's a big operation, so there is a team, but yep. you could easily get a student yep. who can say, hey, I give you 10 bucks off your lesson or an extra free yep. lesson. Can you manage this page for me? Because you're going to want to do that. Yep. The other thing, when I started getting more into social media, and it's probably been like 10 years for me that I've been like really on it, and maybe the last five that we've really been intense about it. I remember it was you and Susan Garrett doing an interview together. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's so odd. So not that I came from a competition point with trainer to trainer, but I was found it fascinating that two people who were doing similar things were putting themselves both out to their students because that would have your people looking at Susan and Susan's people looking at you. But I realized the genius in that is that the collaboration mm -hmm. is actually what grows it. It shouldn't be like my, 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 my. Yeah, so yeah. again, people listening to this, I'm sure you would be on their Facebook page and do a live like this. And, and yeah. I would help them too. Yeah. Because 
I almost think having a conversation like this might be a little bit easier for some people than having them face the camera and have to be just doing their own thing. Because I think, yeah. and even when we talked about this, a lot of things have come up with it as you and I talk back and forth. Like, oh, here's an idea. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So the collaboration is a really good thing. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah, the thing to say about, say for example, the series Lifting All Ships, which you can see on my YouTube channel. Again, another th great thing to raise your profile, create a YouTube channel is, I did that for the express purpose of helping people in the situation. And the mantra was, a lifting all, a lift, uh, sorry, a rising tide lifts all ships. In that, in this time, we should be pulling together. So if there's somebody out there that has content to share and I can do it by my platform, why not? And the thing, all the people that I spoke to, had an online presence and the reason i start the conversation was to give people that didn't have an on -prize, uh, online presence ideas about how to get it going so obviously i spoke to denise fenzi and susan garrett who both have massive social media and online presences um and the reason i did it was to not because um you know um i don't want oh i don't want it it's my thing and i don't want it was to say to people look there is so much out there available that and hopefully to inspire people to just start doing it and also to utilize people that are really doing it well to learn from them and to take from them their great ideas and to do it in their own version but again very much in your own lane i am comfortable and confident enough in my own skill set and what i do that i don't feel in competition with kathy santo or susan gara or denise fenzi all power to them i'm absolutely if i can like help them be do their thing or if i can share their stuff on facebook like i'm always sharing um stuff from uh, from those people because i believe strongly in what they they say i think they're brilliant in what they do and why would i not raise them up even further because in raising themselves up i'm raising all of us up in, uh, um, raising them up i'm raising all of us up including myself so you know and that's my ethos to being and, and hopefully that's what comes across in um, again, how I project myself on social media. I'm not protective about, I don't get all precious about my content and, you know, oh, don't share it, etc. By all means, share it. You know, say to people, I got this idea from Kamal Fernandez. I'll openly say, I got this idea from Kathy Santo or Denise Benzi or Susan Garrett or Craig Ogilvy or Dave Munnings or etc. who are numerous people that I've spoken to. Because, in, as I say, a rising tide raises, a, lift, a rising tide lifts all ships. And as we're all in this together, if we can have that that philosophy and ethos, we're all going to be able to move forward. And I think you were the first person I saw. And again, granted, when I was doing dog training before I got social media, it was kind of like I was in my own bubble, yeah. just because it was I was just managing what I had. Yeah. But you were the literal first person that I ever heard credit somebody mm -hmm. with what you knew, mm -hmm. which is why I instantly liked you and reached yeah. out to you. Yeah. <laughs> but we once a month for my students, we do something called Ask the Vet because I'm not a vet yeah. and at least one day will be a vet, <laughs> my daughter. But until then it's ask the vet because as much as I have opinions and knowledge on things that are veterinary based, I am not a vet. And yeah. so I want to give people the opportunity to speak to an expert, yeah. somebody in line with my beliefs as far as the yeah. veterinary profession goes, yeah. but I offer that to them and they appreciate it. It's not, yeah. it's not in any way, shape or form taking away from me. I Absolutely. Sit here, sits there, Absolutely. And we have discussions and they love it. Mm -hmm. They it's so I would encourage you if there's mm -hmm. an expert that you know in a field that you are not an expert in, yep. have them on your little yep. Facebook. Do uh, something like this. Absolutely. No. Now great. I love talking to you, Kathy, as always. Always super fun. So it's like, you know, I could spend hours talking to Kathy. We have such a great <laughs> banter and rapport between us. So again. If you have any questions about this stuff and you're thinking about it, reach out to myself, reach out to Kathy. I'm sure we're, we're both very happy to give people guidance. I've already helped, had loads of people reach out to me and I've been very fortunate to be able to give them just some of my experiences to make this situation easier where they've, you know, they're daunted by the prospect of creating an online profile or starting an, the online journey. Um, so if you're dubious about it, just come to me. I'm more than happy to help. Kathy, the same. Again, look at Lifting All Ships. Again, that series, video series, where I had conversations with leading lights in the um, online industry talking about just this um, and, and listen to the, the, the pearls of wisdom, as it were. But from me, from Kathy, hopefully this has been insightful. Hopefully it's been inspirational and, and interesting. Put some comments, put some feedback on. Uh, and we'll probably, knowing Kathy and I, have another conversation in the future. Do this again, for sure. <laughs> All right. Take care, Kathy. See you later. You as well. Bye-bye.